Hi everyone, welcome to Duality Repair, and this is the Holy Grail of Hi-Fi, the Pioneer SX 1980. My plan is to completely restore this electrically. The owner said he will take care of the cosmetic restoration, so I'm not going to worry about that. I know for a fact this is going to be a very long, humbling, and rewarding experience. So let's get started. Here's the first look inside, and it's completely untouched by me. I'm pretty happy as it appears that pretty much everything appears to be here and intact. There's a few things that have been disassembled. This cover is missing. I think I've seen in some photos that there should be a cover here, but I'm not positive. None of that is a deal breaker. The bulk caps appear to be original. Those will get replaced. The owner has informed me that the unit does turn on, so that gives me a high degree confidence of the transformer, which is great. If, uh, if that failed, then this unit is probably done. The tuner section here looks to be original. Um, there's a lot of electrolytics that will definitely need to get replaced. I think I've seen a few that appear to have failed. Taking a quick look at the left amp, that all appears to be original and intact, which is great. The right amp, unfortunately, I can definitely tell some work has been done. Either some or all of the output transistors have been replaced, and they have not been replaced well. And so I know that's a big sticking point with units like this, or this unit specifically. These output transistors are very obscure very very difficult to find um, direct replacements, if not impossible. And so we may have to do some modifications there. But overall, at least from the top, there's nothing that appears to be stopping me from completing this restoration. Let's take a look at the bottom. All right, here's the bottom of the unit, and it's looking pretty clean. Everything seems to mostly be complete and original, with the exception of the work that's been done on this right amplifier board up here. So you can see some of the work that's been done. We have two exposed wires here flapping around in the breeze. You can get a quick shot of these output transistors that have been replaced. Each of them are only actually mounted with one screw, it looks like. I found a wire down here, this blue one, which unlike the rest of the unit is soldered to its terminal. And then this fuse here is, doesn't look to be aligned properly, so that was probably replaced at some point. So there are some points of concern. I don't know much about this unit yet. I know I will be well acquainted with it come a few weeks or months from now. Looks like we have some boards down here that lead off to the front controls, both on the bottom and the top. We have the back of the tuner section here and here. Power supply board right in the middle, and I know from what I've seen in some videos and read on the forums that this board is subject to several issues, so I'm going to have to heavily scrutinize this once we get that out. I don't even know what these are yet. These two boards, we'll get to that. Not sure what this section is up here. Looks like some sort of power distribution, but we'll get to that too. So it looks good. Looks like I have the green light to, to get going on this restoration. I guess the question is where to start. For me, I'm most concerned with the amplifier channels, specifically with the output transistors. So I think I'm going to start there. Here's the right channels amplifier board. And it looks to be in pretty good condition. Everything appears to be complete and relatively intact. All of these pins look like they're starting to tarnish, so I'm going to want to clean all of that off so they're making as solid an electrical connection as possible with the mating female pins in these connectors here. There's only three electrolytics to replace, these two and the smaller one here. Just due to the age, regardless of how they test, I am going to replace those. There's two transistors mounted to heat sinks. I'll pull those off the board, make sure those are measuring properly, and then clean and reapply new thermal compound. I will measure every single resistor and diode on here to make sure those are measuring properly. And there's one area of concern. It's this package here. You can see there's a crack starting to form right down the middle. And inside this package is four diodes in series. This is part of the bias circuitry, and it's mounted to the heatsink so that its temperature can track with the temperature of the output transistors. So it's a fairly critical component, and just like the output transistors, this is not available. So I am going to do what I have to do to get this to function. I'll probably glue or JB weld that crack so that it doesn't split any further. I did measure this, and it's reading open in one direction, and it's got the appropriate voltage drop in the other. So it seems like it's measuring OK. Just want to make sure that crack doesn't get any worse. So I think recovering this board shouldn't be too bad. That leads us to the actual output transistors. All right, where do I begin with the output transistors? So you can see that these are not the originals. These are Sankin 2SA1215 and 2SC2921 pairs. 
Due to the package difference between these and the originals, they're only mounted with one screw each, which is not going to work. The wiring and soldering as well, extremely messy. That is not going to work either. So everything on here is going to have to come out. It's all going to have to be redone. These transistors, for all I know, could be suitable replacements electrically, but I am going to replace them with something else. Due to the difference in the package size between the ones that I'm going to replace with and the originals, I'm going to have to come up with a custom mounting bracket as well for each one of these so that they mount properly to the heatsink. And I'm going to redo all of this wiring here as well just to make it as clean as possible. It's going to be a lot of work, but we're going to get it done. All right, here's the board removed from the tray. It looks like there may have been a little bit of work done. You can see these two packages right here are the transistors mounted to the heat sinks. They may have been removed at some point. Down here as well, I believe that's these two transistors. Those as well may have been removed. I will thoroughly inspect all of the solder joints here and make sure that they're all solid. If any of them are questionable, marginal, I will reflow them. We'll get the board all cleaned up as well. You can see some dust here. I think the first thing I'll do is pull these two transistors and the heat sinks off, measure those, and reapply a new thermal compound. The right channel's amplifier board is practically done. You can see I removed all three electrolytics and replaced those with new ones. Just out of curiosity, I did measure the ESR and capacitance of those ones, and they are measuring just fine. I removed and tested these two transistors here with the peak meter and they were measuring just fine. I understand that's not a comprehensive test, but that's the best I can do without a curve tracer. I applied new thermal compound to these two heat sinks, and then I also applied some new thermal compound between this package and this heat sink. I inspected every single resistor and diode on the board, and they're all measuring as they should. I inspected all of the solder joints on the back here. Most looked pretty good. I did have to touch this one up. It was a little questionable. And I found a few small solder balls here and there that I had to remove from the board. Other than that, this looks to be in pretty good condition. I did apply some JB Weld to this package here, both front and back. I'm hopeful that that will prevent this from cracking further. I did the best I could with that. This uh, form of JB Weld is good up to 230 degrees Fahrenheit, so that should be plenty um, high enough for the application here. The last thing to do is just to clean the tarnish off all of these contacts. I tried using some contact cleaner and a toothbrush, it didn't really work well for me. So from what I've seen on some other videos, it looks like the best method or one of the best methods is to use a fiberglass pen. So I have some of those on order. Once those come in, I will finish this board. All right, so how am I gonna solve this output transistor problem? I'm gonna use these two transistors here as replacements. These are OnSimi MJL4302A and MJL4281A. These transistors meet or exceed the specifications of the original transistors for power, for current, for voltage. There's only two potential problems. Number one, the transition frequency of these is more than double that of the original. These are 35 megahertz. The originals were at 14 megahertz. So we'll deal with that potential problem in a moment. Number two is obvious, the package style. So these are TO264, and there's no obvious way to mount these to the heatsink. I thought about maybe turning them on their side and mounting it either like that or like that, bending the legs up, and that would work, but it would make the wiring a lot more difficult and it would look a lot uglier, so I decided against that. What I did instead was, me and a buddy from work used the CNC mill to create these custom aluminum brackets, and these are gonna be awesome. So the transistor will fit really nice and snug in this pocket, and then we'll use the holes on either side to mount the transistor to the heatsink. It's gonna look nice, it's gonna work nice. I'm really happy with this. This guy's got everything. He's got the CNC mill and he's got many other pieces of equipment. He's a very versatile guy. He can pretty much do anything you ask of him. So I'm really glad that he was able to help and I'm really glad I was able to assist in the fabrication. So thanks a lot, Tommy. I'm gonna get these installed now. All right, look at how pretty that is, huh? These turned out really, really well. This is gonna work. They look nice and they're really solid. These transistors aren't going anywhere. I have mica spacers and thermal compound underneath each transistor, so that should provide adequate thermal conductivity. Next step is to get this wired up. So I will carefully bend the terminals of each transistor perpendicular to the heatsink, so I have some room to work there. 
To do the wiring, I have, I'm gonna have to mostly use new wiring, so I have the same size wiring as the original. This is 20 gauge in various colors. And to fix the wiring to the terminals, I'm gonna use this ring style terminal with a hole just big enough to fit around the terminal and then I'll solder that together. It's gonna look really nice. The bases are all tied together. The collectors are all tied together. The power for the collectors comes in through the harness from the top and the wiring for each emitter comes in from the harness from the bottom. So I will have to reuse the connectors on the original harnesses and a little bit of wire. Other than that, I'm gonna redo pretty much everything. So we'll get to work. All right, here's the final result for the right channels output section. I'm very happy with the way this turned out. I think it's gonna work well. I think it looks really nice too. One thing to note are the two film capacitors here. These are each 0.1 microfarad at 625 volts. They're tied from each rails collector directly to chassis ground here and here. I mentioned that there could be a potential concern with the significant increase in transition frequency between the new style transistors, the MJLs, and the original style. These capacitors are in place to hopefully mitigate that concern by filtering out any potential high frequency. While I take 100% credit for the work that you see here, this was all actually inspired by a very, very old thread on the Audio Karma website. It started way back in 2006. And so if anyone that was involved in that thread happens to be watching this, just know that I appreciate you and that thread is still relevant today. I'm gonna get the board installed back to the heatsink and then I'll get this right channel reinstalled on the unit and then I have to do everything all over again with the left channel. Here's the left amplifier board and it looks to be in pretty good condition other than it being pretty dusty. I plan on performing the same process to this board as I did on the right channel. So I will remove and replace the three electrolytics, remove and measure these two heatsink mounted transistors, and then clean and reapply new thermal compound to the heatsinks. I'll measure all of the resistors and diodes, make sure they're measuring okay, and I'll clean the tarnish off all of the contacts and then do a general inspection of the board top and bottom, make sure there's nothing noticeable that needs to be done, like touching up solder joints or removing solder balls, things like that. Let's take a look at the output transistors. This left channel has the original output transistors straight from the factory. And you can see they were actually using capacitors between each rails collector to chassis ground as well. They're using a little bit different capacitors. These are ceramic, unlike the film that I used and the values are a little bit different. These are either 0.47 or 0.047 microfarad, a little bit lower than the 0.1 I used, but it's the same theory, filtering out extremely high frequencies that might be present there. Can be tempting to want to reuse these output transistors because they are the originals, but they are so old, so even if they're measuring properly, I would want to replace them because it's, there's no guarantee they're not gonna fail in the near future and we don't want that. Also, I'm a really big fan of symmetry and so in order to have each amp or each channel perform identically or as close to identical as possible, I'm going to perform the same modification, the same transistor modification on this channel as I did on the right channel. Out of curiosity, let's check a few of these original transistors, see if they are any good. So it's able to detect the PNP, gain of 68, no leakage current, that one looks good. Let's see if the NPN is any good. Yeah, it detects this as well. Gain of 35 and zero leakage current on this one as well. I think I'll hang on to these. Anybody need a set of these or three sets?
All right, the left amp is done now too. So far, so good with this unit. That's it for this chapter of the Pioneer SX 1980 series. Stay tuned for the next video when I'll replace the bulk filter caps, rebuild the power supply board, and hopefully do a power-up test. Thanks for watching.